guys, how's it going? It is your boy, Monk Man Drew, and I'm here to do my manga reaction to Dr. Stone, manga chapter 219. And let's just say that uh, if you remember what happened last chapter, uh, we focused a lot on the new discoveries, uh, the internet, uh, the fact that now that they have the internet, they're able to communicate their plans to build the spaceship in part, and now they're going to be focusing on the actual astronaut mission. So in this chapter, most likely, we're going to get exactly who's going to go on it. Uh, most likely, Senku, Sukasa, and Ryusui are most likely going to go through the astronaut training, but because they're going to have a bigger rocket ship, they may have more people actually going to the moon. So it's going to be very interesting to see who's actually going to be a part of the team and who's going to go through this astronaut mission so if you want to see more of me uh reacting to dr stone uh keep subscribing and keep liking to the videos because i really really want to continue doing this and with that let's get right into the actual reaction because i'm very excited all right let's see yep we're starting off with uh dr stone Ch -ch chapter z equals 219 three heroes so yes three people are going to the moon uh like i said it's most likely going to be ryusui uh Sinku, as well as sukasa but that could change completely with this chapter so we started off with our rocket will seat three and the astronauts who will travel to the moon are and we don't get it revealed but we most likely know who's going to happen as you have uh <clears throat> yeah i'm sorry about that as you have a kaiju who's like, heck yeah, finally, we're up against Y-Man, the big, bad final boss. As you have Suika's like, but who's going? As you have goes like, <clears throat> uh, if you insist, I'll think about heading the call to duty. As you just have Kahaku's like, nobody asked you. As you have, uh, not Chelsea, but yeah, no. Yeah, Chelsea, Chelsea, yeah. Makes sense for the space expert to choose the, that means Zeno. So yeah, Zeno's going to make the choice. Oh, this is going to be interesting. Ooh, what if he sabotages it somehow? I mean, most likely he can't really do that, but what if he does? I doubt he will, but what if he does? Okay, as you have Zeno's like, here in our stone world, the mission into space will be an entirely different beast than the missions of the past. First, for the majority of the flight, including the takeoff, our astronauts will be petrified. Oh, as you have game saying, of course, they only need to be revived for the critical part of the mission. As you have Sinku's like, yep, designing our life support systems was way easier than the assumption in place. As you have yells like, a distant advantage in our new world. Yeah. However, coming from Zeno, the unprecedented difficulty comes in not knowing the exact nature of the mission. Who exactly is the Y Man? Can our science trump over this force or foe? Foe? Gosh, I can't speak. All we can rely on is our expertise, experience dealing with Y Man's Petro Beam. That key factor may decide humanity's fate. As such, we will not seek out astronauts from the 21st century. Instead, we will select and train three astronauts from among us. Yay! Oh, wait, I, I, I think it's like, I think we're gonna get like hints to it. It's like, we need the following three. A pilot, a scientist, a warrior. Ooh, I wonder who it's going to be. I think we already know, but if they pull like a switcheroo on who we think it's going to be, oh, that's gonna be great. Okay. Mm -hmm. Ha ha ha. I just saw on the other side, as you have Reese, he's like, ha ha, that first slot is mine. Am I wrong? As you have Crumb's like, sure, since he's the pilot, no objections there, right? As you have Zeno's like, picking our scientists is more of an issue. I must remain on ground mission control as no one else can fulfill that role. And then you just have Crumb like, the science, ain't it obvious? As you have, uh, Chelsea, not Chelsea, as you also have Suika's like, why is that even up for debate? As you have Zeno's like, that may be petrified during the flight, but even so, our astronauts must undergo considerable stamina training. <laughs> and then we immediately look over to the other side, where everyone's like, hmm? And it's like, dear Senku, stamina? <laughs> oh yeah, I forgot. Senku's stamina sucks. 
Oh, so that may bring him out of the running to be astronaut. His stamina sucks so badly unless he's able to build stamina. As you, oh yes, we have Nikki saying a flea could outlast you, Sinku. Crying uncle during the clothed swimming test. Pathetic. How you ever going to take a single step in that heavy spaceship, spacesuit? Oh, God. Oh, no. Also, love Nikki that she's here. As you have everyone just seeing this entire thing, it's like, you have a sweet kiss like, oh, it's Nikki and them. As you have Taiji's like, when they make it back to Japan. Yeah, wait, wait, yeah. When did they make it back to Japan? As you have Geek's like, I suppose we didn't notice because we've seen them every day on video calls. <laughs> oh, gosh. I'm so glad Nikki's back. I'm so glad. Oh, my gosh. It's so great. As you have Reese like, hmm, now that the internet's back up and running, we don't need to station key people around the world anymore. Yay, the crew's coming back together. The world's online and everyone's sharing science tips. So we've hit the phase where the people of each region are building back civilizations on their own. Okay, as we get the return of Taiju uh, seeing Yuzorihara, and then you got Kinryo coming back and immediately being decked by Kohaku because of course that's what happened with Genryo. Gosh, it's so great to have him back. As you have Gein saying, um, dear Zeno, is there another reason the troops are called home? As you have uh, Zeno's like, elegant deduction reasoning as always, Gein. But yes, we must now select our mission's warrior. Okay. So while Sinku is a scientist that needs to build up his stamina, now we're also going to choose the warrior. And I think we all, yep, Tsukasa. Of course it's going to be Tsukasa. We cut over. Oh, well, actually, you know, we got Tsukasa. We also have, not Yo, but we also have, oh gosh, what is his name? The dude with the mask. Oh my gosh, it's been so long since I've seen him that I literally forgot his name. Uh, but yeah, we also see him. As we have uh, everyone's like saying, talking about those Ishigami village guys can move. They are a water tribe after all. Yeah. Oh yeah. Cause they're fishers. So it makes sense. And it's like wearing clothing is no big deal when there's such a strong swimmers already. Yeah. Coming from Suika as you have uh, Sinku looking at the situation and it's like in these astronaut selection trials, the clothes swimming test is our Achilles heel, right? As you have, Oh, Sinku remembering his father, and he's still attempting to swim with that motivation. And it's like, whoa, look at that. Oh, yeah, Sinku's giving it his all. Yeah, he's he probably won't pass, as now we got the concentration trial. Ooh. As it's like you have Yo saying, I've heard about these kinds of tests. They give them blank white jigsaw puzzles to solve. Or other takes that demand patience and diligence. As you have Yo's like, eek! As he, they give the papers to uh, Kohaku. I think she's going to fail. Yeah. <laughs> she fails miserably. Because it's like zero. Like with a maze of a spaceship. And she just blows blood out of her like nose and mouth. Because she's not smart enough to do with that. And Siku just goes through it with ease. And you have Chelsea's like, Siku's got no problem with brainy stuff as Gein's like who came up with these ill way mazes as you have just <laughs> sigh in the backgrounds like maze making program that's so great now you have everyone going through an equilibrium test and they're just not handling it well and then you have Sukasa sure can jump as they have a climbing exercise and it's like you have this guy saying to be expected he always done well in this area as you have magna's like damn it that guy's been the strongest since day one and then you have reese was like it settles it then sukasa's our warrior oh gosh why can't i remember his name with the mask and i hate the fact that i forgot it i'll probably remember it later on not necessarily all candidates have proven to be elegant physical specimens and uh, right because we're not just comparing raw strength and records. The battle against white man is going to take more than that. But then you have Tsukasa looking up. But we're hardly experts when it comes to combat. As you have a Kohaku who can jump higher than anyone in the world. As Tsukasa is just looking at it. And it's like he remembers like her jumping. As we get a flashback to totally Utsune. 
And Sukasa's just looking and it's like thinking, it's like, oh, so are we actually gonna choose Kohaku? Oh, that's gonna be that's gonna be interesting. And she have Sukasa giving Kohaku coming near. It's like, what's going on, Sukasa? Why'd you ask me to meet out he? Oh shoot! Sukasa attacks her, and Kohaku blocks. Is like, have you gone mad? Explain yourself. Coming from Kohaku, as we see Sukasa still fighting, is like, after coming this far, I refuse to believe that you would backstab us now. As you just have Sukasa just smiling, it's like, no, I'm sorry, Kohaku. Forgive me for gauging your skills. This brings back memories of the day we first met when we crossed blades much like this. Oh, because she couldn't defeat him. It was like, after countless life and death battles, you are now just as capable as a warrior as Hyoga or myself. Yeah, it's Hyoga. I forgot his name. Hyoga. I knew it was going to come up. And she's like, haha, spare me, spare me the flattery. I know that much from our skirmish just now. Even so, when it comes to martial arts, I can't measure up to you at the least. In the least. The gap between us is not the yammering charisma you imagine. Especially given the weapons now provided by the Kingdom of Science. Yes, science is the great equalizer. Okay, I see. Okay. So, it is my opinion that a nimble, fragile warrior is more suited to moon combat puts this will reduce the rocket's total weight by dozens of kilograms as the combat expert of this team that is my appraisal oh and it's like luna mission the three heroic astronauts who will confront y-man are ryusui Sinku, and kohaku yo that was a twist Oh, and the chapter ends there. Oh, okay. So, we knew Risui and Senku was going to go up. But the fact that you have Tsukasa that chooses Kohaku to do it. Oh, that's actually cool. And it means that Kohaku is going to be the first female astronaut to go back into space after the, after the petrification. Oh, I see what's going on. So, let's go over this chapter in more of a review format. Overall, what this chapter was pretty much about is like what we predicted. We went over all of the uh, candidates, all of the people that could cooperate or could play a part in the moon mission. Basically, this is what we were doing to choose the astronauts. We needed three criteria. We needed the pilot. We needed the scientist. And we needed the warrior. The pilot was extremely simple. It was going to be Ryusui because he's like the ship captain. So that was easy. We needed a scientist. And unfortunately, Zeno couldn't go up there. He needs to stay on the moon. Sorry, on the ground so that he can be like the key point to allowing this mission to go off without a hitch. Pretty much what he would have done in modern day. So he can't go up. But most likely Sinku would because he's like pretty much like the best science user besides Zeno. Unfortunately, he sucks at physical stamina. So he's probably going to build up his stamina for a little while because we see that he can't really swim. But he's going to do the exact same thing that his like stepfather, uh, his father figure did. Which would pretty much like just learning how to swim, which we see that he's trying. So most likely he's going to build up his stamina a little bit more. He's not going to be muscular or anything, but he's probably going to have at the very least enough stamina to be comparable to like probably his like stepfather, his father, his family. I keep forgetting his name, but like we, you know who he is. Uh, I'm probably going to uh, give me a moment. Biakia. Like how he was unable to swim, but he eventually learned how to due to the determination of Senku. So he's most likely going to have that same determination remembering his father figure. So we're going to see a little bit more of that. But also, let's talk about the major twist, which was the warrior section. Because we saw pretty much Senku and all of them doing like all of the trials. Equilibrium trials, climbing to show like how strong and agile that they are. And pretty much everyone thought that it was going to be Tsukasa because that's what was established like early on in the series. And Hyoga probably wouldn't be able to do it as well and neither could Magna even though they can all swim. And really the only like... And even Tsukasa was really thinking that he would probably get it. But then he saw how much stronger uh, Kohaku has become since like their first like interactions where he comes to this realization that she is just as powerful 
as he is and how at first she wasn't able to compete with the advent of science it kind of equalized the playing field to the point where it caused them to be on equal level and because they're equal when it comes to their warrior status that means that they have to now deal with optimization which if you're going to go with a bigger bulkier guy versus a smaller slender woman when it comes to how many people you can send up to space and lightening the load Kohaku would be the better choice than Tsukasa, and he brings that up. So it's very interesting to see the twist in that who's going to be the warrior when we all thought that it was going to be Tsukasa, we knew that the science user was going to be Senku, and we knew the pilot was going to be Ryusui. So overall, sorry. So overall, I really like how they were building up to that twist and having Kohaku actually take the place of Tsukasa even if it was established that we all thought that Tsukasa was going to do it in the first place. So it's going to be very cool to see how this interaction is going to work on the moon with these three individuals since they're going to be the astronauts that go to the moon. So I can't wait to see what's going to be happening next. Most likely now that they have their astronauts, 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 they're most likely going to build uh, or start building the rocket ship parts as well as building the spacesuits themselves within the next chapter if not within the next few chapters so that's something to be interested in so overall this was actually a cool characterization of not just the characters but the story and the progress that uh, the people have gone through so far when it comes to Sinku and how he's going to be more determined and gain a little bit more stamina so that he can become an astronaut like Byakuya his father as well as getting to see like the progress of science in their primitive society about how they were able to finally equalize the playing ground between the strength and science where neither one has surpassed the other but now that they've met this equilibrium now that they have more choices to choose the best option for whatever they need to do and not just relying on strength alone or relying on science alone they can rely on both and that's why you have kohaku so just getting more characterization for sukasa and kohaku in this moment and how they've been influenced by the world and by the people in the world now it's very cool to see that so yeah, that's all I really have to say about this chapter. Hopefully you enjoyed it. I know that I did. And leave your thoughts down below on whether or not you think Kohaku should be the final astronaut, or do you still think that Tsukasa should have been the astronaut instead? Leave your thoughts down in the comments down below. Leave a like on the video if you liked it. Subscribe to my YouTube channel. And don't forget to hit that notification bell to be notified whenever I do more stuff like this. Do all that cool jazz, and hopefully I'll be able to catch you in my next video. Goodbye! Huh.